College basketball was changed in a huge way when John Calipari was hired at Kentucky. He had just come off a successful eight-year career at Memphis, which was right after a not-so-successful NBA career. Calipari's coaching philosophy was perfect for Kentucky at the time, recruiting with the promise of one year in college and then getting drafted by the NBA. Calipari was also nothing like his predecessor, Billy Gillespie, and ran a player's first program. Calipari's philosophy was basically, give me the best players, I'll take my guys over yours. The dribble drive offense was specifically perfect for the freak athletes that Cal needed to succeed at the time. And yes, if you can't already tell, this is a biased Kentucky fan sharing and remembering this special season. However, even if you aren't a fan with me, I do hope we can take a look back at this team that is unquestionably one of the most memorable teams in the sport. I can't begin to overstate the amount of life that was injected into the fan base after Calipari's hire. Fans were desperate for something new after a short career by Billy Gillespie, who went 40 and 27 in two seasons. And quite frankly, his amount of time in Lexington just deserves its own video or documentary, not because he was that terrible, just because of the wild stories that did happen because of his time there. The existing roster for Cal did include some really good pieces like Patrick Patterson, Darius Miller, Josh Harrelson, DeAndre Liggins, and Perry Stevenson. Fans were really crazy about recruiting at the time. Social media obviously wasn't the same as it is today, so if you were a fan and online instead of Twitter, most news came from the news or different blog sites that would break stories before anyone else. Calipari's number one recruiting class, the first of many, included John Wall, DeMarcus Cousins, Daniel Orton, and Eric Bledsoe. And there was one more. Jo John Hood, what are you doing? Get over there with your teammates. Between the two new Johns, one of them stood out in an exceptional way, and his name was not John Hood. No offense, John Hood. I love you. I hope you're killing it at Missouri Western State. John Wall is, of course, the John that I'm referring to here. He was on the cover of Sports Illustrated before the season even started. After the season, he got a shoe deal with Reebok. There were a couple songs made about him as well that went viral. He also probably had one of the most iconic moments for a Kentucky player off the court as he did his dance at the Big Blue Madness fan event before the season started. Sport freshman from Raleigh, North Carolina, number 11, John Wall! If you were a kid at the time and a basketball fan, you probably did this dance more than you care to admit at your school with friends or whoever. I know I did. Everyone wanted to be John Wall. But there was one question that revolved around this team. Would they be able to win as mostly freshmen on the floor? Spoiler alert, they did win a lot of games as mostly freshmen. The Cats cruised through a non-conference schedule with a few tough games against teams like North Carolina, where they won 68-66, Connecticut at Madison Square Garden, which was an electric environment, 64-61, and Miami of Ohio, where they won 72-70. Yeah, this is a game a lot of people don't remember, but it definitely happened and they did pull out the win, but it could have gone the other way, so. A couple other signature wins was the in-state rival Louisville, as well as their 2000th win in program history against Drexel. 
Once conference play started, they did roll pretty much against what was a weaker SEC schedule at the time, even being rewarded number one in the AP poll for about a week before losing it at South Carolina. The most notable moment from the conference schedule was probably against Mississippi State, an overtime win on the road. DeMarcus Cousins' phone number got leaked to Mississippi State fans, and I'll just let him let you know how that all went. The first half, the big guy has been a load to handle for Mississippi State. DeMarcus Cousins inside. And call me. The only other ranked teams that Kentucky played were Tennessee, who beat Kentucky in February, Ole Miss, and Vanderbilt, who surprisingly was ranked in pretty good early 2010s. The Cats pretty much cruised through another SEC tournament. There was another overtime win against Mississippi State during that, uh, but they did win that tournament and secure a one seed in the NCAA tournament, entering as one of the favorites along with fellow Blue Bloods, Kansas and Duke. Now, I will be honest, probably the way I've been describing this team makes it sound like it was pretty much all sunshine and rainbows. Even with this team, there was quite a few struggles involving free throws and three-point shooting specifically, uh, which was honestly something that continued over the following years as Cal recruited these types of players. The Cats did get after it really quickly in the NCAA tournament. In the first weekend, they had 29 and 30-point victories over East Tennessee State and Wake Forest. The number 12 seed Cinderella story Cornell matched up with the Cats in the Sweet 16. However, I'll let DeMarcus Cousins describe how this matchup went. A lot of people see this as the smart guys against the dumb guys. What, how, do you, how does that play on your mind? I mean, I think it's stupid, but I mean, I'm not going to really let it get to me. I'm, I mean, we're, we're here to play basketball. I mean, it's not a spelling bee you know, or anything like that. It's, we're here to play basketball. The Cats earned a chance to play for a ticket to the Final Four against West Virginia with players like Kevin Jones, Devin Ebanks, Deshaun Butler, and Wellington Smith. I'm sorry, I, I just don't know how this game happened. Remember how I said Kentucky struggled kind of all year with free throws as well as threes? Yeah. Here's the numbers. It was a really ugly game. I remember being really sad and did not even understand how this was happening. But they couldn't shoot. Fans were sad, obviously, but we know that we have our coach and couldn't be more pumped for the future. With this system of bringing the most athletic players and honestly getting the best recruits possible, we felt on top of the world. The Cats finished with a 35-3 and record on the season, which was more than enough to keep everyone happy despite not making the Final Four, which this team could have definitely done. Once the NBA draft came around, five Kentucky players were drafted in the first round. This prompted Calipari to say it was the most important day in Kentucky history, which we all knew it was dumb at the time, but let it slide for our new basketball king. This team was honestly a huge deal for other programs as well, because it didn't take long for different programs to start recruiting the same way that Cal was, with the promise of getting to the NBA after just one year. In a way, this team sort of forced the game to shift as a whole after it was clear that the best athletes were going to beat you. Shooting had to become a priority, which was how Kentucky got beat in the first place. I really hope everybody enjoyed this sort of top-down look and summary of the season and what happened to that team. Looking back at it now, 14 years ago, it's still one of my favorite teams in the sport. Probably my favorite team in the sport. Um, definitely, like I said, biased. But uh, yeah, that's kind of all I've got for today. Um, definitely let me know down below if there's any other sort of things you'd you'd like to see as far as 
relating to college sports, uh, feel free to, to let me know. Just wanted to say thank you so much for watching and glad we could look back at this team together.